Welcome to another episode of Liberty Dad Podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues. During this episode, we'll tackle two topics, socialism and labor unions. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and then applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jay Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for this season of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed on how libertarians view socialism and labor unions. Tub. Hey, How are you today? All right, I'll split it. Now, here's what's funny. See, even before we start doing this, remember I told you I don't understand the whole podcast thing, stuff mm-hmm. along those lines, so I've been kind of opening it up a little right. bit, kind of seeing. And you know what? I realize there's a big difference between us and all those other people who want to be like us. Um, you know what they tend to do? They tend to get on and they'll spend the first 20 minutes almost sometimes, like just back and forth. Hey, what's going on? Like like not getting, like sometimes you want to skip the first 20 minutes and I realize, you know what? We don't do that. Right. Like, we're kind of... All right, let's hit the ground running. Well, let's we get into this. Give marriage we do, counseling. We did. Was that two weeks ago? Yes, but but I think that maybe part of that is just because we tend to talk before. Right. So I want people to understand that maybe that we, that we do talk to each other. We don't just come in here right. and do business and bust out again. Right. But we spent all that time before talking about other type of things. We do. In fact, one week didn't it affect what we did. Remember, like, oh no, we need to be recording this, and we yeah. kind of switched up we a did. little we, bit. We did. We, we did we, do that. We so gears. so let I I don't. So think are we shifting gears now all of a sudden? Yeah. I, well, no. I think that maybe okay. I think that I there's. Sure. We respect people's time, and in respecting people's time, you understand right. they didn't call to, they didn't like start watching to right. see how I'm feeling and your feeling is. They want right. to, hey, well, we are let's... feeling really good. We're great. Like, all right. So, so we so we get into it. That's what I'm saying. It. No, we're not doing all the. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, only in this world right here, right in this dynamic, do I become the straight man. There are trade offs, right? So, like, we don't have this 20 minute conversation about whatever. Mm-hmm. But we cut up and carry on and be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're... Yeah, but you're such a dork at it. I mean, you know, I never promised because, anything, uh, anything anymore. <laughs> well, like, you're popping your collar and what was, like, I like when you talk about gangs and stuff, what gangs do. Like... I mean, you know, I am a West Side rider till I die. You're not even on the West Side. What, I mean, what, what West Side of what city? Not okay, Jacksonville. So, Have you ever lived um, on the West Side of Jacksonville? Um, not Jacksonville, but... So the I, West Side of what, I one in Des Moines, time Iowa or something? I visited the West Side <laughs> of a small rural town. Okay. Is that where you had to bring those bad kids from church over yes. to the other side of the streets over there? Was that the west side of town? So, yeah. so. so anyway, all right. So I guess we are guilty now of we are covering all the stuff that's not the topic. No, it's it, no. Actually, I think we we do it frequently. We we talk about different things in the very beginning sometimes. And okay, it just gets maybe I should notice. I, I, yeah, if you know, probably because we're so good at it, it feels like we're just only talking for like a minute or two. And, and it, you we realize, wait a minute, and everybody's like, dude, you do it for a half hour every time. Yeah, you know what the, the difference is? Maybe we need to get onto mm-hmm. is sponsors. See some sponsor. of the some of the other ones have sponsors, right? So they had to spend a couple minutes clearing things up and saying, right. "Here's our stuff." Now sometimes they drag out the sponsor thing a little too long, but right. maybe that's what you need some sponsors. The sponsor for today is nondescript iced tea. I, I have nondescript iced tea also, but you made yours. I purchased mine. I am right. supporting the economy. Right. You, on the other hand, are just selfish and want to keep your money. I did. Yourself. I went out in the yard and I grabbed my tea leaves. <laughs> And after I threw them down to decide how the day was going to be. Oh, oh, you went that far into it? Yes, I went down and then I said, I ching. And my son said, what? (laughs) Just kidding. I don't know. (laughs) But more importantly, here's what I'm going to tell you. You know how I know that's not true? I just saw your schedule. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And, 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 and I can I can tell you I just it was not on your schedule. There's nothing about drying out tea leaf oh, on your schedule. So All right. So what are we supposed to be doing? But speaking of jokes about my son and oh, I Ching and all that. I wasn't making fun of your son. No, make that very clear. You I are am, making fun I of your son. I am teaching him it's true, it's a true story. I am um, teaching tea him leaves? to say ching chong. Ching chong why? What's because it's funny. Does it mean anything? No, it's just it's how 
white people would make fun of and Asians. He has a look to him. He doesn't have a look. He is. Yeah, I know. He's but... literally like you look at him and you're like, you know, squint the eye and do, everything. Do, do you know, in all honesty, um, like physically, like you're not that boy's dad. I mean, okay. You know what I'm saying? That, no, I, oh, because he got hair and I don't? Everything. Just everything about him. Like, you don't have that Asian look to you. I think that the Asian appearance has, uh, what do they call that in, like, genetics? Like the, the dominant, dominant. Yeah, it's the dominant trait, uh -huh. right? And, you know, mine just, you know. Uh, uh, listen. I, I am Native American, and clearly we didn't dominate anything. Anything. Yeah, you guys are Not the only So you're used, to, you're no, used to just no all dominating. losing everything that you have inside of I know, that. right? Listen, but you see two of my three boys. So There's not the, much genetics the, there the either. <laughs> dominated through colonization, and the Asians did it through just procreation. Reproduction. Uh huh. All so, right. So, but anyway, your point was that you're trying to mock your son. You're trying to make, or you're just trying to make your boy uh, no, just make be able to laugh at it. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think people don't laugh at themselves enough. They, they, how much different would things be if people did? They, like they take our, we take ourselves way too we seriously. Do. We do. Like, dude, you're not that important. Like, who, like, who do you know that's so important right. that they should be able to well, take a little joke every now and then? Think about this. If you can laugh at yourself, mm -hmm. nobody really can laugh at you. And I mean, they can, you but, did, but you take that from them, right? That you take right. the you can't get me mad because what part I of the insulting laughing at you mm -hmm. is that you're upset about it, right? It's it's not that's, that that's they why make they the joke. do it. Yeah. I mean, the joke is its own part, part, mm -hmm. part, right? Like so, there's a portion there where like, hey, if it's humor, then maybe somebody will laugh at it. But for bullies and people that are being mean, part of their enjoyment is that you are not enjoying it, and I know this. Because it happened to me. And that, I was made fun of in high school, or not high school, but uh, middle school. And I started making fun of myself. It was like 8 Mile, and M, you know, with Eminem and all that. And then at the very end. I didn't like, see that movie. Uh, oh, so at the very end. I, I don't believe in white rappers. Okay. So if there had been one if there had been a white rapper? in this movie, if it had existed, then there would have been this potential white rapper who okay. was nearing the end. And of course, rap battles are all about making fun of each other. Yes. Right, and it comes with it. Like, if you can't handle the jokes, like you, I don't know how you could be a rapper, right? They're yeah, like sense. you're not gonna make it in this world. So, uh -huh. um, so his buddy's like, "Hey, man, what do you, you know, are you afraid about what they're gonna say about you?" And he's like, "You know, about this and this." And, and you see that like it's on his face, and it's like all this moment. And then he comes out, and he starts like his whole rap is about him himself. It's all about him. It had nothing to do with the other guy. And at very end, he's like. He's like drops the mic. He's like, tell people what else they don't know about me or something like that. You know, I mean, he made a couple of jokes about the other guy, but yeah, it basically but... was, it was pretty much all about him. And the dude was like, what do you say? Like, because that, that took, that put them, what they were going to naturally be on the offense. Well, okay. They right. lost that now. Right. Like, right. Okay. So what, and that's what do exactly I do? what happened to me long before Eminem, there was DL on the West side, you know, of his Catholic high school. I was on the West side of the cafeteria. Seems very similar. And on the West side of the cafeteria. Yeah, inside inside of, the cafeteria. of the Catholic high school. And, yeah. Inside of the Okay. That's school. how you come middle from the school, West side. Oh, the Catholic middle school. Right. West side of the cafeteria. West side of the cafeteria. Of the cafeteria. Catholic and, middle school. And all the cool kids over on the rich side were making the fun of me. You know, yeah, I don't know. Were they that I, far? I, I, were they on the east side of the cafeteria? Yeah. Like, and so they were making fun of me, and they would. They was the west side where the lunch lady sat. <laughs> yeah, and so, and so one day, all of a sudden, I was like, yeah. And then I started making jokes, and my, I always say my friends, but they were not. But uh, my peers were like, he's he, he's he's making fun of himself. And like, they didn't know what to do with it. They were like, what the heck? So, and then from that point on, I learned, just make as terrible a joke as you can, and people will shut up. And and, and they do. And so, but but inside, I feel like you do you like need a hug or something. Are you good? No, I'm good now because I just make fun of everybody. 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 That's not what you were just saying though. It's almost like you were saying, "Hey, I'm going to take this away from them because we shouldn't be about making fun of others." Well, you got to take but it. That, you, that's not what you're saying now. You so gotta, now, well, you take it from them, but then you got to be on the offense, you know? Oh, so take it from us that you could do it to them? Yeah, basically, it's like you, it's like conservative still foreign policy, uh -huh. but. At a school level, with humor, right? So okay. we'll call it my my foreign humor policy. For your foreign humor. <laughs> oh, it, trust me, you have plenty of foreign humor. <laughs> so, like, like, okay. So, I, I, am I allowed to mention you're just on a work phone call? My, my my what? That you were on that work phone call, and I happened to hear you. Like I was listening oh. to you this time. Usually, I don't pay I mean, attention. I, um, can I mention this? While we're recording, well, you know, it's I funny. guess. Well, what, first, it's what it, now you know what my wife feels with every Sunday at church. Every Sunday, I'm like, well, you know, there's this thing, and she'll just sit there and be like, oh, oh no, what is he going to talk about? I mean, try not to be too descriptive. So. No, no, no. I just uh, it was kind of funny because, like, ordinarily, um, when you're on that phone call, I'm not around. I tend right. to come up here or do whatever. Um, and I happened to hear that, and then when you hung up, I said, listen, he's not getting your jokes, dude. Like, right. he was, like he he wasn't he he wasn't. No, getting I, them. I think people get my jokes, and they just are like. 
they haven't really come to a point where they can understand the quality the depth of, humor, of it, the depth that yes, I like, deliver. Like, yeah, your, your jokes are an onion. I mean, <laughs> and, and you got to peel back stuff to get to really do. where it's sitting at. They do. Yeah, uh, uh, honestly, sometimes they are a bit of an onion, and I'll make jokes meaning it one way, and it's taken the entirely opposite way. Oh, that's then, called social media. And I'm all like, oh. That's not where we're so, supposed to be at with this. So I get in trouble sometimes. Okay. So remember a few minutes ago when I said, you know, it's nice that we get right to the business? Right to the business. Hey, you said like 20 minutes and we're like, only like I, 10 I, minutes in. Oh, then we're still doing it. So we but, got we got 10 minutes to cover. Okay, so well, just, do we talk about life? Do we talk about, well, we have kids and stuff like that? And that's the point of your Liberty Dad I, podcast. I, I do is, have is a about, kid. Because your purpose. And he is doing that very well. Thank you for, hey, thank you, one, two, three, socialist, not an anarchist, said. I'm just making it up. There's nobody watching. I'm just saying, what do you, hey, are we doing a live one at some point? We I know will we're do a live one, but we'll, we'll have to talk about it off air. I don't want what? people to get hope and be like, oh, they're going to do it this time in this place. Like, no, and blah, blah. See, that's how you plant the seed. They start going, oh. Yeah, we got we, we got a couple there. episodes to plant the seed. We don't have to plant it right yet. All right, so I did not mention. We just planted it. I didn't mention. That we're there gonna, is about doing a, a live potential episode. live podcast in the future. Okay. And it's not going to be on the 25 topics, correct? It's going to be other stuff. It's not going to be out of the book, correct? Oh, that's what I thought you were going at. No, no, no. The, the I thought, one that we were talking about going to a special Oh, no, 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 not that location. one. No, 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 not that. That's not going to be live, right? I don't know. I thought we were. I don't You're going to do that one live? I thought it was a recording. Oh, I guess we are going to record that. Okay, so see, we're working this out, folks. Thank you for tuning so, in. So, but no, what I meant by live is remember we talked about doing a live one, like a right. one evening type thing and just yeah. kind of, but that would not be based on right, the book right, that right. we're doing. No, there, just... there, there was conversation, folks, about doing a uh, continuing because what happened is we're doing the Libertarians on 25 Issues. Oh, get us back to the topic. And, Very good. And yeah. then- once 25 issues are over, like, what do we talk about? We've just, we've covered everything, or have we? I thought you were done with me so, at that point, in all honesty. I thought so, you were like, okay, Tub, we're done so here. My work here is done. So around the idea to say, hey, maybe we continue this on. Maybe we like each other so much, you know? He was asking me about Bible study earlier. Maybe we like each other so much that we become David and Jonathan, and we are just, like, tight-knit. I feel us being more of a Jesus-Judas situation, in all um, honesty. <laughs> so... <laughs> I see it's going in a different direction. All right. Guess which right. one's Jesus? I, well, I mean, you're the one who turned. I away. don't mind that. You don't I mind being Jesus? Bit, I don't. I, you know, being Jesus is no, no, no. An no. Honor. Trust me. Trust me. And in this situation, I know that you see me that if somebody's way, playing Jesus, it's, it's not based on the beard. It's weird that you see me that way because I don't even have don't. long hair. I don't. Um, and I don't. I mean, I am kind of complex. I don't. Like no, that Jesus. is true. That that you know the real understand. Jesus, the real Jesus, not the frilly Actually, white Jesus. Hold on, you know that's on we refer to walls. him inside the church. Where we, I refer to him as Pantene Jesus. Pantene, Pantene Jesus. And a lot of people, if you're a little bit older, you get the reference. Remember Pantene shampoo and stuff. Yeah. And they had. So I refer to him because his hair's always nice and shiny right, 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 and he's right. all. And, and I and I actually keep a picture on my phone of what he probably really looked like. Probably mm. a little bit more scraggly, like had some loot, some. Cut ends, not and, cut ends, uh, split ends, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, just it's stuff along those lines. He's got the bigger nose, he's got the olive skin, he's kind of shorter, he's kind right. of frumpy. He's not, he's not white, pretty. Like he's not right. white, pretty. Right. And, and so, um, inside of this scenario, I want to close this out with this: in the Jesus, Jesus, Judas scenario, you're not Jesus. Right. I mean, it's possible. No, no. It I'm calling possible. it. I'm claiming it in the I mean, name of the Lord. I that's, could that's, be a reincarnate. Just you have gone down a very nasty path. I'm just saying. There's always a possibility. Never no, there's really not. Anything. Let, let, let me um, hang on. I got a book right here. It's going to tell you. No, no, no. It's not. That's not really a possibility. All right. So none of this. I thought you were about to get us back on topic. To be we honest are going to get back All on right, topic. Ahead. All right. So today we're topic. talking about labor unions and we're going to be talking about socialism. Uh, we think there's a bit of a, a closeness between the two topics that we can have them in one single episode. And so let's start with labor unions. So let's okay. see what the book had to say. I don't have the oh. book with me. But, um, it's downstairs. But it's okay. You got the book? I do. Right. He's going to grab the book while I'm sitting here. Try a new Sprite today. Oh. Just kidding. Dude, you can't do it. Listen, you don't say a name until they start paying us. Oh, well, you know. You just did free advertising. They're I, not going to pay you for that. What, to advertise for the advertisers you want, not the advertisers you got, something like that. That's not how that goes to you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, introduction to the Libertarian Party. Wes Benedict. If you haven't read this book, and you get a copy of it, read it. It could probably take you like a couple hours. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's, pretty. it's a short read. It's relatively easy. It's even I'm heavy. going through it. And I don't... It's, it's not heavy. So what we're doing, we're going through the 25 issues in Chapter 3, and we're expanding on them a little bit more than what the author did. So here's what the author said in uh, or on labor unions. Give back my book. because right, Here's your book, Beth. Any group it. has the right to assemble and take peaceful actions. Employers have the right to hire or fire or expel from private property whomever they please. 
initiation of violence by either group is wrong. All right, what do you got on labor unions? Okay, so I just address this because here's what's funny. I, as I was kind of putting my nose here, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I remember having this conversation with you not too long ago mm -hmm. where we talked about you. I don't even know how it just got brought up through other discussion. We probably right. should just kept it there. Right. Uh, but anyway, but I, I remember pointing out that how when, when I looked back in Connecticut, I was part of a uh, union. Oh, yeah, mill, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. And I was actually a union rep back there. So, um, and it ha oh, exactly. And, and you know what's funny? And like, I, I, I said it while I was there, but You're I really. Sure, I'm the Judas? Yeah, yeah. No, but I've come back. So Judas never came back. Actually, uh, I never knew, I never knew beforehand. So now that I've learned, the idea that it's the idea of Judas is that you knew and walked away. I didn't know yet. So inside look at of me, that. Paul. Ooh, yeah, Paul's a bad. I like the Paul reference. Not <laughs> anyway, the Bible references so, today, Paul. Yes, sorry. Yes, so inside no, of but that. But not really. This, right, but not really. So here's what it was. So I, I actually realized. <laughs> You have to apologize to Jerry's. You own this joint. So, uh, but I realized that in all honesty, as a union rep, I spent a lot of time, what I refer to as protecting the bums. Mm -hmm. Like I, I truly, I didn't have to go into the office right. and protect the women who had been there for 40 years right. and came in every day, busted their hump, did what they had to do. Right. It was always these younger ones. Right. They didn't really want to work. They, right. you know, they were late for work. They'd call out. They did all kinds of things. So I spent all my time protecting them. Right. Here's what's funny. I come down here to Florida. Now I'm doing the same line of work because they actually offered me the job to come down to a different company, right. thing, but they offered me the job. And I came down here to a non-union shop, which is pretty common down here in Florida, the mm -hmm. right to work state. Right. And so I came into the non-union and I realized, wait a minute, this is actually better. Because before then we didn't have those certain guidelines because we truly back in Connecticut, if it, we had to follow the contract mm -hmm. and you know, if, if I was a machine operator and you were a machine operator, who's been doing it longer. Right. If, if I'm getting bumped off of mine, I get to bump you and then it goes down the line and you would spend an hour and a half bumping people and moving things without being productive. Right. So down here, there was none of that. There was mm -hmm. truly this mentality that says, um, if these machines aren't running, we're not getting paid. Right. And everybody's just like, I'll do what I have to do to make it happen. And then there was this one operator one night, and this was what really stands out to me about it. Mm -hmm. There's this guy I've been down here in this company forever. The guy was amazing, just a great machine operator. So there was a machine that I real I tend to run, the one they brought me down here to run, and I was helping him on his, and they shut his down to move over to mine. So I start going to the back because my union mentality says he's higher than me. I go to the lower mm -hmm. position. And he starts going to the back. I'm like, hey, George, where are you going? And he's like, I'm going to go back here. He goes, this is your machine. That's not union mentality at all. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because in his mind, it wasn't about, hey, I'm higher than you. Right. Now, along with that, here's what was funny. What people don't realize is a lot of times the unions, they're like, oh, but it brings pay up for everybody, but also limits pay. Right. Like what we had with our collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm. was the idea that says, hey, listen, um, you can only get this pay right. as a machine operator. So it limited. So it was great for the bottom people that got brought up, but the top people said, "This is all you can make." So what was funny is that when I came down here to Florida, I actually, which is very contrary because it usually you tend to move down here south, you make less. But I actually came down here. They offered me a couple more dollars an hour, and I was almost making what the top guys were making back in Connecticut. Mm. And, and so when I started looking, I'm like, "Well, wait a minute. What exactly was the union accomplishing now?" Right. Now I think if you go back to the history of unions horrible work conditions, stuff right. along those lines. I think you could almost see a purpose for them back right. then. That you could kind of say, hey, listen, we're going to make sure this stuff isn't right. happening anymore. Right. But now a lot right. is kind of taken care of. And and I think what, uh, um, you know, I get into arguments all the time with friends and you know, there's all kind of about unions. Oh, I have, okay. I have right. several friends that are, that are very pro-union. Okay. I've had one that flat out told me, they said, uh, without unions, we'd be a third world country. And I'm like, not sure about that one, um, but mm -hmm. I but you know I don't want to make fun of the person because I I think what happens is once upon a time when you look back at the history of what what companies were doing or the uh, the situation that that existed, there's a place for unions, right? Like yes. hey, because mm -hmm. you effectively like I need a job. Okay, well you go and you work in this really terrible condition um, for very long hours, and I'm going to give you what I think is appropriate, right? Which on the surface is legit. If you yep. if you uh, agree to something, then it's a legitimate. We've uh, had that agreement, conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So that that on the surface, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all is well. That 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 might mean that hey, you know what? I um, there weren't many other options. I took this option because it was better than the other ones, which yep. were even worse. Mm -hmm. But it still wasn't a good option. So how do you get? How, 
and and maybe it can be a better option. How do you get it within uh, collective bargaining, yep. right? Or or people coming together, which is okay. And honestly, there's no reason why a libertarian wouldn't support a group of people coming together and coming to an employer and saying, "All right, look, we're going to work for you, but here are the here are the conditions here's what we which want. we will work, mm -hmm. right?" And, and the owner can choose. Here's, here's what we're going to offer. So then you have this negotiation, yep. right? And so instead of a negotiation between, say, a single HR person and a single employee, you might have a group having a conversation with maybe, uh, I don't know who it is, who's the the equivalent in a business, but you oh, know, whoever's, uh -huh. you know, maybe it would be their Usually HR. manager. Yeah, like we always, inside right. the inside the mill, it was the, it was the uh, plant manager. But what I think a lot of people forget is that the conditions that we work in now here in mm -hmm. the U.S., are nothing like what they used to be. Right. And so I think it's an argument to be made that many of the unions have served their purpose yep. and it's time, it's time to move on. Right. Or they need to reorganize and say, do we have a purpose? If it is, if we do, let's focus then on what that. is it? Mm -hmm. And let's focus on that. Yep. And and then people, and, and I think it's kind of almost like at a, I think we're at a point where you can kind of start over. And, and because some things that have happened, like, I, I'm, it's my understanding that 40 hour work week is one of the things that right. unions were responsible for. Mm, they'll they'll tell you in. that. Yeah. Uh -huh. so guess what? Okay. We have a 40 hour work week. Thank you guys. It's, it's great job. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, like, we're like, pretty used to it now. Yep, thank you. You know, like we, that um, becomes the standard. Right. That's how when we go talk to a job. Right. When do you expect me to work? Right. And, okay. Um, and, and everybody pretty much knows exactly what happens if you go salary. You probably mm -hmm. don't have a 40 hour work week. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably have like a 50 hour work week, maybe even 60 in, in some rare cases, even more than that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so we, we're aware of it. Like, and I, and I don't think that, I think that when, once you get something set into place like that socially, it becomes very hard to undo it. Oh yeah. Right. Like, so, uh, not, um, uh, not social, but, uh, unions kind of were this new thing and they were groups of people banding it together mm -hmm. and they were saying, we want to change in this particular condition. Right. So there was this, like this extreme movement to make this happen. I, I, I don't know that you're going to have an extreme movement to make it. Unhappy, unhappy, right? So I, I think forty-hour work weeks are basically kind of, here. It's kind of the understanding. Like, but but that's what, that's what we say. Hey, great job, unions! Right. Great job. Look, we are glad right. that you got this institute. Now, here's what's funny. I like that he puts in here. They have the right. Mm -hmm. they, they, no, don't force them. Don't right. force them to be in the union, which tends to happen in other states. They, oh, no, no, mm -hmm. we are a union shop. Like when I you started a union in the military, you don't work here. Yeah, that's what it was. That's how it was mm -hmm. back where I worked before. Um, and what's kind of funny though is the mill that I worked in down here was actually out in California. Right. And they started talking about unionizing. Right. And so the owner said, nope, shut it down, moved it to Florida. Right. That's how I do it. So it's just kind of funny that he's like, no, I'm not. And I think that every owner has that right, should yep. have that right to go, right. nope. Now, listen, there might be ways, there might be owners who go, you know what? I get it. Let's sit down. Let's talk. And right. they're fine with that. And, and right. you do it. Two sides. Right. Two sides come yep. together and say, we're willing to do this. Yep. And you go and from there. As much as I don't like it, I do, uh, I, I would agree with a single union shop. Like you, what do you work mean? Here, like a shop that says you either join a union or you don't work here, right? Because I would assume that is a um, that is the um, contract between the union and the company that they made. Right. We will be a union. We are going to nobody give you gets these to go things. rogue. We we are going to give you these things. You give us these things. One of these things. One of these things that you give us is that you don't employ anybody that's not a union mm -hmm. member. Or in, in these maybe in these yeah. jobs, right? Not not necessarily anybody, but in, in yeah. For us, jobs. for us on the floor, we always refer to it as the right. floor. Um, naturally, people upstairs didn't have yeah, to worry yeah, about that, yeah, but us on the floor, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, but I, I think that that's the point. I I think it's okay. We agree, and, right. and there were times that the unfortunately the union was agreeing to stuff that we didn't like right. on the floor. You know, our presidents and vice presidents were like, oh, this is what we're going to do. We're going right. to accept this. We're like, whoa, 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 because here's what happens: you start getting into collective bargaining. Listen, there's an opportunity for corruption. Yes. Like, let's, let's never forget that that is still right. there. And if you go through the history of unions, you're going to see corruption. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely. going to see issues. And, and so the problem is, I think that by getting rid of that, right. okay, you've established what you want to establish, which we covered. Right. But now if I have that freedom, okay, so when they were bringing me down here, I was able to negotiate my contract. Right. I was able to say, hey, I want this. I want these type of things. And and, and it worked. And I'm right. like, okay, good. I want this. You want this. We are in agreement with this. Right. And it didn't make any difference right. what they'd offered other people. Right. Okay. They And you don't get angry. Like right. you, you kind of, you take it or you leave it. If you're smart enough to mention these things, you yeah. get them. Or, yeah. or the owner goes, nah, I don't want to deal all of that. Right. And, and I, but I, I like the idea of what is it saying is that 
I had that opportunity. Right. Like I was able to put together a package to relocate me mm -hmm. that other people probably didn't get. Right. Okay. But they saw the worth and I want this person. And I like when that's when you have a skill that somebody else says, I really want that skill. And I don't want to be bound by these standards of this other group that represents right. 200 people. I want that person right. at this way. And I think that removing the unions gets us there. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I agree. And, um, where was I going to say? I was getting ready to go somewhere and I've just kind of. Well, I'm amazing. So it's probably hard to follow that. No, it is, right? Like. So, but let me ask you this then, real quick. Do you feel that unions have served their purpose and they're done? Do you see a place where you go, no, no, I still see why we need them? Or, hey, like, do, what's the future for unions for you? I think that really depends on what. I think it really depends on what society wants. What, 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 what do we want? Like, once upon a time, society wanted better working conditions. Right. Because there were clearly enough people to say, look, let's have a union. Mm -hmm. I think now we're at a point where we should really evaluate and say, man, is the union really serving any useful purpose? Okay. Or is it just like a leftover, you know, a vestige from yesteryear? And that maybe we need to rethink it and say, you know what? It was nice having you guys around, but we need, and, it, and, and maybe it's not just no union. Maybe it's some other entity, right, that takes its place. Okay. You know, or maybe it's, hey, we, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think there could be. It's hard to, it's hard like, to come up with whatever right, idea. Do you think might be in the Starbucks needs to unionize? Do you think there's? Do you think those employees need to come together? We're, we're going to so. unionize inside of here. I don't think so, okay. honestly. And and you know what? I think there's an argument to be made. Now that you made me think of it, I think there's an argument to be made that um, companies are a lot more sensitive without unions. Yes, because you've got like Starbucks. Since you mentioned it, Starbucks, uh, I believe. That if you're an employee, they pay a little bit of your college tuition. Mm -hmm. They have as long as you're an employee, or, mm -hmm. like you just had to be an employee, and um, it, you know, and so a lot of, and there are companies that are now coming out. They're more socially interested, and they're like, "Well, we're yep. doing this." I've seen companies that are like, "There's a, I, I, I can't remember the name of it, but I know there's a software company, and the the leader of that software company boasts how nobody in his company makes less than I think like seventy thousand dollars." Okay. Like everybody's like, that's the starting at this point. Now I have some disagreements in, in terms of like the, the, the totality of the benefits. I think there's always a trade-off. So I don't think that you, I think sometimes they get presented as if like, ha ha, look, I'm doing we're great doing things. This great thing. And there's no trade-off that's negative. But now you whatsoever. work 65 hours a week. Well, no, whatever it has case, to be. Mm -hmm. And in that particular case, I think the argument is just to give it an idea. I think the argument is, okay. Let's say you have two employees that are making seventy thousand dollars a year. That's one hundred and forty thousand dollars just in the salary alone. Yep. We're skipping any benefits and anything right. along that line, right? Um, but you could have hired three people for um, about sixty thousand dollars and had a little bit left over, right? And so what that means is, yeah, two people are making seventy thousand dollars, but out of the potential three people, one person's not employed. If somebody's by your happened, company. Yeah, somebody lost a job. Right. And, so, and those other two people are going to pick up some slack. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's always a consequence. There's always a trade-off, and and it's not necessarily always a bad and thing. It, it, and people, it just is I, the thing that I, we have to recognize. I, I, we were going through this issue recently throughout the country about well, we want minimum wage to be X amount of dollars. And this might be where we got the conversation from right. before. But we want minimum wage to be this amount. Well, that's great in theory, but the problem is the owner is not going to all of a sudden go. I'll start losing money now because he's right. no, no, no. What they're going to do is they're going to find a way that I'm not going to hire somebody. Somebody's right. going to get replaced, and. It's happening. I started saying this years ago when McDonald's put in those kiosks. Right. I said, y'all understand that once these things are functioning, somebody over right. there is unnecessary. Yep. And you know where you're seeing it? It's out of control right now. I say it's completely out of Walmart. Oh, yeah. Because Walmart, you know what they refer to them now? Now they want everybody to go through self-checkout. Right. And my, so I make the comment. I'm like, well, you know what? As soon as you pay me. Right. I'm like, you give me a discount that says, hey, you go through here. I'll give you you know 5% off your purchase or whatever right. it happens to be. And now they're referring to actual checkout areas. Assisted. Check out. No, that's a cashier. That's their job. Right. And I will wait in that line to make them do that. Right. And, and those, these are the things that are happening that Walmart's looking at it with the amount of employees that they have. And right. we're pushing for higher wages clear across the board for everybody, whether right. worthy or unworthy. Right. Well, guess what? Walmart goes, okay, fine. We'll fix that. Right. Here's what we're going to do. So now instead of having six registers open, here's what they do. They put one person Right. To kind of monitor the whole area of self checkout. Right. And that's it. So now technically you lost five people working. Right. And, and people don't and, think of it. And that these way. are the consequences. Of these, these are the trade offs that people have to recognize with everything. Um, I'll give you another one real quick. Please. There was a um there Please was a guy, give another one. 
There was a guy. Uh, there's a guy on Twitter. His name is oh, uh, Dan hold on. Price. Be Twitter. Dan. His name is Dan Price. I think he's uh, a businessman out of Seattle. I think. Okay. And he's also on Twitter a lot. And he's he's kind of the more like social woke type, you know. And so he had tweeted out something about um, uh, about I think it was Jeff Bezos or it might have been Elon Musk. It was one of the two. Okay. And it was like I think it was Jeff Bezos because I think it was Amazon. And he was like, you know, Amazon makes you know the the CEO makes this much money and. He was basically saying if you split that up among his, um, you, you know, the the employees mm-hmm. in the United States, um, it comes out to like this much money or something like that. And he was kind of making this argument like, hey, employees uh, could be making more if it weren't for this crazy salary of the CEO. Uh-huh. And then somebody came behind him and said, well, turns out that you make this much money and your employees – Oh, and, and it they played that, that game, Adam. It was actually that his own, by his own standard, his employees would have had a greater amount of money to them mm-hmm. using that same standard than the Amazon was. Because Amazon has like 200,000 employees and this guy has a lot fewer. Right. So even though he's not like a super duper billionaire, turns out when you do the math, his employees would have benefited more from that same logic than than Amazon employees. Can I add something to that that gets lost entirely too often? Here's what's funny. You take those guys, you take Bezos, you take Elon Musk, anything, anybody along those lines. Um, they can go, all right, I'm done. Mm-hmm. You understand? They don't need any more income. Right. They can live their lives perfectly fine, shutting it down. And right. So you understand that any of those guys can go, you know what? You're right. Right. Shut it down. I'm done. And I, then how many people lose jobs altogether? I told people... They could go with that. I, I've told people I, in my arguments. I said, you know what? If um, if Jeff Bezos decided to sell all his stock and um, just cash out, right? Mm-hmm. Take whatever money, uh, liquidate it. Take whatever money. I'm no longer going to be controlling. I'm not going to be the CEO. Nothing. I'm done. I'm out completely. I'm going to get all the money that I can out of this, and I'm going to leave. The next person that comes in might not run it so well. It might run and it to the ground. To the ground. You know. Yep. And so, it, you know, so I, I think people need to be very careful about what they think. And, and, and this kind of, let's tie this back to the labor unions, like like this was kind of the argument because you had the, the so-called um, robber barons, mm-hmm. right, who were taking up all this money and um, you have to, you know, like, would would some of these guys, uh, what was the argument I want to go, would some of these industries have been as profitable and as productive if. without them? Mm-hmm. Um, or would they have been lesser? So in other words, would society overall have benefited in the same way without these same If people? it was somebody and else without that work so ethic, that whatever always, it was, that made us put that effort into it. Yep. But that doesn't mean that there's not a particular situation where you say, look, the trade-off here isn't so good. We can do something about it. So you might say, hey, look, I think that there's an opportunity here to unionize and improve the working conditions here because, my goodness, we have no safety equipment. Mm-hmm. Right. We need safety equipment. And so then you go forward and you find out that, hey, um, uh, unionizing had some benefit here. Right. Right. And, um, and But do you once that's done, do you kind of go, OK, got it. We're right. all set here. Now. Right. And, 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 and I, think, this. I think as we go forward in time, we, we, we take a look and we say, do the unions serve the same benefit that they used to? Some cases, maybe some cases, maybe not. Right. You know, uh, I'll give you a good example. Oh, I, I the got, other one you didn't like? I, I got lo- loads of examples. This is actually okay. related to unions. So I used to work for a fastener company. And my job would, so what we would, um, I, we worked for a fastener distribution. Or I worked for a fastener distribution company. Okay. And so my job was basically managing the product from the time it hit our dock to the time that it uh, effectively went on the um, uh, production line and was put into the things that were being made by our customers. Okay. All right. Okay. So the way it worked, we'd get like a pallet. Yep of fasteners and then we would break it down into smaller bins and tubs and whatever Mm -hmm. and then we would ship that out and there would be some like cyclical system so if you had the production line then i might go to a spot on your line like this one location and then you might have three bins of this particular material and that three bins would last until we were we came back to replenish it so maybe we maybe two bins would be used okay there'd be one bin there two empty bins we would put in two fresh bins take the empty bins and go and refill them and then keep the cycle going okay and so then you always had product on your line on the line, production right. lines 
and while then, somebody else kept making it there. and at uh-huh. the same time you weren't um you didn't have a whole lot of it so you weren't buying it by the pallet you were buying it basically by the bin okay because what happened was we would charge you right away mm-hmm. okay but you wouldn't get paid for it until you put it on your the, whatever you were making sent it out and got and paid then for paid that. from them yeah okay so there's this there's this management of it so most of the places were not union but i went to one place that was union okay and they were upset and they were saying hey we have all these they had and these companies a lot of them had really long lines so you might have like thousands of individual locations that we oversaw right okay so i went to one and it was union and they were like you need to uh you know we're having a problem with our our bin cyclical system you know we don't always have parts when we need them we have too much blah blah right. blah you know very common problems and I'm like, okay yeah we can fix it so I go in, they tell me, my, my peers told me, they're like, we go in, it's union. Do not touch anything. Okay, I got you. As my coworker and I, and my coworker had experience with unions. So as we're walking down the aisle, and uh, I'm like, so-and-so? I'm like, uh, do you feel like everybody's eyeballing you? And she's like, oh yeah, they are. She said, they want to know what you're doing here because no, nobody knows who you are. You know, they've never seen you before. And they want to make sure that you're not taking their job. And I was like, what? So then... So the, it uh, doesn't seem like the union made a better work. So so space. my my instruction was to fix their problem, but not touch any bins. Ever. So you were just going to so then, have to. So then I said, okay, that's fine. Can you provide me somebody so I can instruct them? Tell them, right? And they were like, you don't tell anybody what to do here. Okay, okay why am I here? Okay, like that's exactly my question. I was like, wait a minute. You want you're complaining because our company isn't managing this. We're not allowed to touch it. We're not allowed to instruct anybody. All we were allowed to do was go around basically and make recommendations and basically hand them in. Which could have... And then maybe they got done, maybe they didn't. There were recommendations like, hey, we say that if you move these parts around, you do this and you do that, Uh you know, then it'll be more visible. This is... So you were doing some consulting work. Kind of. Basically, and ultimately people could do whatever they want. And it was so frustrating to me because I was like, here we are getting in trouble. Like the company was upset with us. And I'm like, You're like you brought here to try to help, but I, but I can't touch it. Uh-huh. Like I'm not allowed. So there's an example so right there how a union hindered like, the moving forward. Even if the product was on the floor uh-huh. in a tripping hazard, I was not allowed to pick it up and put it. <laughs> I was not allowed to touch it at all. It, and I never did. I was never in there, and I never touched a single bin. Do you know? You know what's funny though? So and, and here's what I found: is, it's along those lines that the non-union mm-hmm. shop was better about systems. Right. Because they were trying to cut out every part that they could. Right. Something that's, you know, if it's not serving a purpose, like right. we kind of had this role of, are you making that box? You take, that's right. how we refer to it. Are you making that box better? Is right. what does your role, does right. it improve it through the right. process? Yeah. And so I found that that was far better served in a non-union shop right. than in the union shop. It was more about, hey, let's bust this out, make sure we're always improving. Yep. And I think in that case... The, I think the, the biggest challenge with unions is that there's not always a clear-cut, proper division of labor. Because in that particular story, that's exactly what happened. It was like nobody nobody was assigned to do that job at that company. They wanted us to fix it, but we couldn't touch it. But you couldn't because nobody was assigned to do that job right. at that and company. So, so, so there was like nobody responsible for it. So you know what happens? They will stay running that way through until they shut down. Correct. If that's the case. Correct. That, that's to say, they'll, they'll never improve. They'll never get past right. that because they're not allowed to. Right. They're not allowed to make those recommendations. Let, let me tell you something. Um, we had make-ready time on machines mm-hmm. in the shop, in, in the union shop. Mm-hmm. We had make-ready time. They, okay. And it would be six hours long would be what we'd be allowed allotted for make-ready. Right. And um, now they'd want you to get done sooner because right. that were there, you're actually making money off of the time that would... But at the same time, if you were going to bust it out really fast, mm-hmm. you'd have some other machine operators going, you know... Maybe you make that take a little bit longer. Right. Maybe you slow that down a little right. bit because, you know, this is what we got to do. And we have six hours. Why not use more of the six hours? Right. And, and and sometimes if you were kind of a fink, if you decided to, I'm just like, look, I know I can put this job on. Did you say fink? Fink. I did say this fink. This the 1920s? And yes, it Dick is. Dick Tracy? Like, blah, blah, blah. He just called me a fink. I'm done. I got, I got nothing left for this. All right. Listen, I, I tried to help. I tried to participate. I, I tried to give you Dick a Tracy real life here example, with the language. <laughs> and, 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 but, and that's kind of how it was, though. They would kind of turn on you a right. little bit. No, yeah, think. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> and so, dirty in rat sink. The, the bigger, the bigger thing I'm trying to figure out now is why do I keep coming back here every week? Right. Listen, I try. Listen, I try to bring something to this. 
Right. And this is how you repay me. You should unionize, unionize. and bargain for a better working condition. So if I'm not... If I'm not here next week, it is because I'm officially unionizing, and then you got to decide whether you want to work union with that or not. Right here, right here. Uh, oh, right. that's you. All right. So now, do, are you fitting socialism inside of union? Like, uh, not inside of a union, but are you, are you gonna uh, we're going to stop. We are going to segue. Gonna stop. We we do need to segue. So we're going to stop. Uh, hold on. Are you going to cut? I, I'm trying to stop and do I'm video. Tra- no, I'm trying to stop right now. Okay. So now we're going to move on to socialism. You didn't change which is our meaning. second topic. Oh, and so what's up there? Yeah, I know. So let's find out okay. what the book has to say. Do you have anything final to say about labor? Makes yourself? a difference. Makes no. a difference because if I say something you don't like or you just don't mock me or you're just I'll just delete so it. I'm not gonna work. But you don't remember? I know I because don't. you want transparency, <laughs> and, and so <laughs> inside it. So go ahead, do what you're gonna do. I mean, my text has transparency because look, you no, can see no, the background it's your show. It's your show. Just do what you do. So, but uh, we are at, we are coming up at forty minutes, so we're gonna have to make sure that we do transition. Do, look, nobody's stopping you. No, do I'm it. I you. said it two and a half minutes ago. Are you going to transition? And then you said, we're going to pause. And then we paused. And then you kept going back to. In fact, after your pause, you asked me, do you have anything else to add about labor unions? That's not a very good transition. Yes, dear. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Socialism up on the screen now. So here's what the book says. Libertarians oppose socialism at the government level. It's very important. However, if a group of individuals want to form a commune or live together and have joint ownership of things, that's fine. So now, can we fit that in with a little bit of I, labor I, union? Actually, kind of you can. can. Because what are we doing in both of these situations? People are coming together using their freedom of association to say, let's get together and make something happen, whatever that thing is. Maybe they want to go and say, hey, you know what? We don't like the working conditions here. We feel like we should have more... Um, uh, more equipment to work with, right? You know, better equipment. You, you, be careful, you're going backwards. You're and, going back into labor unions or, again. Or, or maybe they might say, you know what? Uh, I have this huge piece of land, 500 acres. Let's bring a bunch of people on here. And you build a house over there. You build a house over here. I'll build a house over here. And we're all going to get together. You're going to uh, you're going to be the farmer, you know, the... the you're going to do the uh, the grains. You're going to do the meat and the, the, the you know the cows and stuff like yeah. that. You do the chickens, whatever. So basically what you're saying, this is how the cult's going to work. Right, right. This is how the <laughs> cult is going to work, right? So this is individuals uh, creating a commune to live together and have joint ownership of things. And they could work out uh, all the details as far as how they, um, how they want to live. Now, you said before we sat down here, you said that you did some research. I have this. I have some okay. notes here. Can, so one of so, the... Well, yes. Never ahead. mind. What? Never mind. Right, right. Here's what I was going to say. I have very little. Okay. I have a quick mention. Do you want me to just do my quick part Let's and then do... you can get into your study and stuff Let's like that? Let's do your weaker, lesser notes. No, no. Mine is I'm a self-application guy. Okay, I like you to be able to take something and be like, yes, that's right. Just because you guys want to get analytical, throw a bunch of words around. Okay. I prefer to give them something. They go, in my life, got it. Okay. All so right. real quick, here's what happens. People tend to think the church mm-hmm. and socialism are the same thing because – you have a group of people who come together and decide, hey, these are our roles and we're going to help each other so that nobody mm-hmm. has need and stuff along those lines. Yes. Right. There is a level where that is true. Right. The difference is inside the church, we choose. Yes. It's not government holding a gun to us saying, you will do this. And now also inside the church, everybody's held to a standard. Right. You're able to say, hey, wait a minute, I know what those people do and I don't really want to help right. those people, so I'm not going to give to this thing. Right. And they have that freedom too inside right. the church. Whereas under socialism in a government, they don't have that luxury. Correct. They're going to take it from you. They're going to give it to these people whether you like it or not. This is right. how everything's going to work right. out. I'm done. Awesome. I agree with that. 100%. Shut so it down then. I think the, so you shut, shut I, this whole thing down? I think the thing that we have to consider first and foremost is that socialism is not necessarily a dirty word. Okay. But it's often used in a dirty way. So I wanted to find out some definitions here, just to kind of, because I, one of the things that I have, I struggle with is whenever you talk about like capitalism, every time I talk to somebody that disagrees with capitalism, I walk away and I'm like, they have no idea what okay, capitalism, what right? And they probably do the Didn't same AOC thing. AOC just say they, that? They probably walk away and like, for a guy that supports capitalism, he uh-huh. doesn't even know what it's about. Right. Right. So let's get, let's get some Definitions terms. Definitions matter. Mm-hmm. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to get, we're not going to get dragged down to definition. Very simple stuff. So I went to Wikipedia. Oh. The bastion of all knowledge. Yes. You can't get stuff out of Wikipedia. You ain't right. trying. So I think they, I think they did a pretty good job here. So here's what they said. Socialism is, a, and it's a long article. You can go are read you, it if Are you, you about want. to read all that? No. No. Oh, I'm okay. going to read like one line. Oh, okay. Socialism is a political, social, and economic philosophy encompassing a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership of the means of production as opposed 
to private ownership. Okay. So they have two words in there, and they talk about private ownership, and they talk about social ownership. So, yeah. so we can actually look at the, the definition for private ownership neatly summarizes the difference between private and social, Okay. just so we know. So we go over here to private, and it says private property is distinguishable from, uh, well, let's back up. Private property is a legal designation for the ownership of property of non-governmental non legal entities. So that's what private property is. So that means it's like not government. Government can't, can't have private property. Doesn't it's, not, it's like square circles. It doesn't exist. Private property is distinguishable from public property, which is owned by a state entity and from collective or co cooperative property, which is owned by a group of non-governmental entities. And I believe that was all we wanted out of it. So effectively, what they're just what they're basically saying is like, government is public property. Private property that I might own as a non-government entity would be private property. So now we're clear on what the difference between private property, public property, and socialism is. And we're just going to kind of go back to the socialism here. Okay. It is a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership, okay, or public ownership. So I thought that was neat. So I wanted to check out some stuff and I was like, I wonder oh, what no. people think. And the first thought that came to my mind was like, you know, aren't the Amish kind of socialist in a way? Like they have their own society. And I don't think it's quite socialist because they don't have public ownership. I still I do believe that they have private ownership. But there are some, like it's still your house. Yeah. And, yeah. So I think but but there are some socialist tendencies in there, I think. Because they're 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 working as a collective group together. It's kind of like the church, right? It's it's closer to the church. Yeah, and I think that you might just find some socialist elements in there. Yes, but in my search, I found something very interesting. Are you going to tell us? Yes. Yes. So if you, I I just because I wanted to see like, do they qualify as socialist? I wasn't sure. I okay. Would, you know, like how how do you like you mean that? like how do they classify themselves? Right. Or just, okay. You know, just in general. Okay. It was just a question. I typed it in. And uh, one of the responses I got was from Reddit. Now, Reddit has um, it's th this subreddit called Socialism 101. So this is where people that like uh, believe in socialism and support socialism hang out and talk about it. Okay. So I'm like, all right, all right. that seems like a good source to go to. But I mean, you're probably I'm not, not going to find to somebody online. That... You're probably not going to find the Amish chiming right, in right, on right. Reddit. But what, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go and find out, like, what do people who agree with socialism, how do they see it? Okay. Right? I thought that was kind of important. Okay. Because... I can criticize socialism all day. But know where they're coming from. Know where But maybe are. I'm not being fair. Right. So the best way to make sure you're fair is to talk to people or listen to people I, I, and talk about it. Wait, go ahead. Yeah, so, I got nothing. Go ahead. So they're talking about the Amish here. And so I'll just kind of read you this paragraph because I thought it was very enlightening. Okay. It's not very long. As for their archaic views on gender and sexuality, again, they're talking about the Amish, that can't be forced away. And as long as they do no harm to others, don't cost society money, and... Don't become a. Uh, it doesn't become a threat to a so societal cohesion. There is no legitimate reason to intervene. Okay, but as we are communist and socialist, I hope we are all universalist. Thus, homeschooling cannot be allowed. The children, if the Amish, uh, children of the Amish or any other ethnic or religious group, must go to public school. Homeschooling is detrimental to both children and society. The same goes for vaccines who should not uh, uh, the same goes for vaccines who should not be possible to refuse uh, modern medical services at least until the child is 18. So basically your body now is also part of their possession. So here's so here's so think about what we said libertarians oppose socialism at the government level. This appears to be somebody now I don't know if this is a very common thought okay. but it wasn't it wasn't marked down by by people in the group. Okay. You got, a few, right. you got a few positive results. Okay. So what this kind of suggests to me mm -hmm. is that people that promote the ideas of socialism right. think of it more at a government level. So then here no, we're there's... talking about like what you cannot have. You can you have to go to a public school. You have to get a vaccine if you're under 18. Right? So this is not the same thing as what a libertarian might support, which would be individuals coming together in some sort of agreement. Now, you would say that they would be breaking that if we agreed upon these terms, this is why we come into the community, and then you start adding, oh, but they got to do this, and they got to do this. Now, now you'd be able to go, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. 
it's not in our immediate terms. We didn't right. agree to this. Correct. Then we get to bolt out. Correct. So you're saying there's the difference between what they're calling socialism and where libertarians might sign on to the idea. Right. It's it kind of ends right there. Right. A libertarian okay. society would be would be um, would and should be. I mean, I, I, be, I assume... it would be socialistic in its sense, like, and there'd be a level of socialism on the side of it. It would, yes. Like it, we help each other. We're all in this together. Type of attitude. It would be more like a voluntary yep. socialism, whereas the socialism that we see in history, the socialism that seems to be talked about, mm -hmm. is a lot less voluntary. And this is the core of the libertarian views, not socialism, I, I, but voluntary. I want to put that, I have that in my notes. Does this fall under voluntarism? Right. It's that, do we now say, hey, we're all in this together, we'll help Right, out. Mm -hmm. right. And so um, when we're talking about socialism, I think it's, I, I think we need to, whenever you get into a conversation with somebody, I think, and, and they start talking about socialism, whether they're talking negatively or positively, I think we need to first stop, hit the brakes and be like, what What's do you your mean? definition? Like, you where are you at? Uh-huh. From a, uh, a very voluntary sense, or do you mean where the government is enforcing it? If it's the government enforcing it, then you have ideas that creep in, such as that where, where somebody might say, hey, public school is not, I mean, I'm sorry, private or uh, homeschooling mm -hmm. is unacceptable in this paradigm. Whereas if it was a social, um, you know, if it was voluntary, mm -hmm. then um, you can go. You could say yes, I agree with the idea of a government school, or I want to homeschool. You'd have right. that freedom still. So if mm -hmm. if there was a society that said we are, you know, the libertarian socialist of America, which would sound weird, mm -hmm. but let's say there was one, then people would be free to come in and abide by the rules, right? And maybe even have an opportunity to change them if such a thing existed, and they would be free to lead them, right? right? And 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 and, um, and a government enforced socialism doesn't allow you to opt out. Right, it's, and we're you're all in now. And anything, anything that might be um, otherwise a violation of one's autonomy mm -hmm. would have to be known up front. Okay. Okay. Yeah, as we walk into it, you got to be able to say you can can't do this. This is right. where we're at. Right. But so, once again, you can opt out. Correct. Which is you, the difference of opt out. governmental always. Right. versus which, society. Which does not let you opt out. Right. And may change the rules on you. And you As we've seen. And, and then you have to accept it. Yep. Right. So these kind of things would violate autonomy. Because I can get together. I mean, let's face it. Every marriage is to some degree socialist. Okay. Like not in the sense of pub public and private property, but you've got two people coming together saying, we are going to share these resources right. collectively. Yep. Right. And so, um, and, but and here's the thing is you got the terms, you make the terms, right. whatever they be, and they'll right. be different for couples based on how right. they do life or things right. along those lines. These kids, whatever we're going to do with kids. But here's the, I don't want to say it this way as a Christian man, I say no, but in the sense you have to, you can opt out. Right. You can be like, Hey, wait a minute. We had an agreement that mm -hmm. we were in this socialistic kind of idea. Right. You betrayed it. You went against our agreement. Right. I'm out. Correct. We don't get that and, luxury and, when and, government and, and does we can, it. Yep. Yeah, and we cannot do that with government. So whenever you, whenever people are talking socialism, I think it's very critical to know exactly what they're talking about, where are their limits, and if they and if they want to impose anything at the government level, eh, no. Let, let me ask you a question, because you get on, you know, more social media stuff than I do, and I you shouldn't. probably come across. I, oh, that's probably true. But um, what do you think tends to be the understanding as you come across these people who want to be socialists? And it's funny because I often say, sure, they want to be socialists in a capitalistic society because it's easy that way. Because you don't have to really deal with everybody taking from you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, when you deal with the people, where do you think they're coming from? Do you think they're coming from the idea that no, truly they want government? Or do you think that maybe they're leaning more towards and they misunderstand it, that they just want private communities? No, I think they want government. They want government. Okay. I think most people, I, I, I have rarely come across. I'm not even sure if I've actually come across anybody that has said, "Look, I believe in socialism, but uh -huh. I think there should be no government, and that the only socialism they become should libertarians be, at that point should be one that I, where I join a commune or uh, and I agree to all the rules in that commune. Yes. And then I can leave if I decide that hey, you that know commune over there is better. Turns out, turns out this commune wasn't for me. It's not what I thought it was gonna. You know, I, uh -huh. didn't, I didn't. I it was unexpected how I thought it, I, I I thought it was gonna be better, but it wasn't. Um, or if the commune decides, hey, you know what? We're all in agreement to change the rules. Now here's these new rules, and then that one person says, yeah, I don't agree. With We're that, not so all in agreement. I'm, I'm gonna I'm leave. Leaving. Yep. So, um, so you're saying the most people you deal with is they want governmental. Yes, because okay. when you start talking to them, they start talking about 
what the government should do to try to impose it and to enforce it. And so I think that they're well, almost can, now, always talking about Let me be very clear. I'm not an advocate of, well, you just need to leave because that tends to be the argument for all people when they don't like something. Just leave that. No, 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 no. We, right. You don't have to That's leave lazy. because cause we, had, we had an agreement that you guys are now trying to go against. Right. But here's what I would like. I'm not going to tell them to leave, but why don't you go in some of these truly socialistic countries and live there for six months or a year? Right. Like, go do that. You go see what it really looks like. Because right. once again, they're dealing with capitalistic socialism. Right. It's right. different. Right. And so you, you say, listen, if you think that's a good idea, here's what I need you to do. I'm not telling you to leave. I'm not telling you that you'll get out. I'm not doing that. Go experience it. Right. Go see what it's really like and then come back right. and you tell me if it's still a great idea. People who leave those countries speak very poorly yes, about they do. communism and socialism. Yep. They don't come here and say, you know, I'm just taking a break from it. But, but I'm, otherwise, I'm going to head back. Otherwise, that place is just awesome. This, listen, I, I could tell you a number of horror stories, truly horror stories, of people coming out of Cuba and coming right. to the states. These are people that, like, I know, like, I've had conversations right. with, and oh my goodness, it's they they're willing to risk all right. of that to get out of that. We we hosted three families during Hurricane Irma. Okay, coming out of Miami. All right, they were a Cuban family. It was one big Cuban family, but there were three distinct right. families, right? And they were from um, Cuba. Uh, uh, some of the older ones okay. had yep. actually that lived in be, Cuba. Yep. All right. And some of the young ones had never been, and somewhere in between, maybe they were they they partially grew up, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, experienced most of their life in the U.S. And so they told me something very, very interesting about the Cuban community in Miami. They said uh, a lot of the Cuban community, especially the older ones, are of the mindset that if you're not a Republican, you're a communist. The reason for that is because the Democrats focus on a lot of social policies. And that's what they, they experienced. Doesn't work. They were like, we experienced some of these same social policies. They're a disaster. They're horrible. So effectively, even though the Demo I'm not saying that the Democratic Party is like a communist party, okay. But what I'm saying is, they championed they? <laughs> some causes mm -hmm. that some of the older generations look at and say, that's what we it got triggers. Mm -hmm. in full over in Cuba, and it was awful. And so they, I, and, and they told they they said it goes as far as if some people will send money home to their families, mm -hmm. and they said, in some Cubans will even look down on you if you're sending money to your family because they know where the money's going. Going, and so they're like, you are effectively just in you know longer terms, you're you know uh, uh, more hand exchanges. This, you're supporting this communist. You're, you're letting it go. You're uh, continuing. You, you know, and not to get into the stories of the stuff along those lines, but that that's kind of what I've dealt with. Like, I, I've talked to people that um, they were older mm -hmm. and they were like, we got to get out of this. Like, this right. isn't. And so they would kind of plan. Like, it's not like this one day, all of a sudden they run out and they jump in. That's not how it goes. They kind of, right. they try to plan some things out. And, and so there's this one gentleman I know about. It's actually a guy I knew pretty well. It was his uncle mm -hmm. had come over. And um, he was saying, that, listen, he had stuff. You own stuff inside your house. It's fine. But here's what was happening. Once he knew he's like, I'm fixing to leave, he had to sneak out at nighttime and start giving these possessions of his house to family members. But he had to sneak it. He couldn't just like walk out there during the middle of the day and say, okay. So he knew he's fixing to leave. So Because what was happening, as soon as he left, government now, at that point, if, even though it was his, now government gets to control it because right. he left. Right. And so the, he wanted to get rid of his important possessions to his family members right. before he took off because he knew that once he was gone... Government's going to own that right. house. They're going to own the possessions of it. They're going to take over whatever's there. And so he truly came with a suitcase. Right. That was it. Right. And that's how he broke out. And you look at that and you go, like, you hear these stories. It's almost like these people now. And let's be honest. Most of these are younger kids now. Right. They need to. I, I often say, we don't spend nearly enough time sitting down and having conversations with the older people in this country. Right. Like, we just don't. We, we, right. We've lost... The, um, it's almost the beauty of of listening to these people who've lived through some things. Oh, yeah. Okay? Um, like, I have it with our next-door neighbor at our house. She's 94 years old. Right. Okay? And she's a black lady, and she was brought down here from Illinois to be one of the teachers down here in one of the first integrated schools. Mm. And they and she'll tell you straight. She goes, listen, the reason they brought me down because she's very light-skinned. Mm. And they, they thought that that was the most socially acceptable at the time, right. the easiest to break into. Right. And, and, and she'll tell you about things that they went through, like through oh, the right. 60s and stuff. Like, they went through stuff. Okay? 
here's what happens. Go talk to these Cubans. Talk to these people who come out of those type of right. things and talk to them. And be like, okay, listen, let them tell you, right. here's what you don't understand. Right. And right. we don't do that nearly enough. We right. probably need to get... We have what's called... Is, isn't that what was it, Ricardo? Isn't that where he's... He, Came out. Sure he he came out of it. He came out of it. Yeah, because him and I had a conversation. We started, okay. I'm like, oh, man, like he's got stories also. Uh, yeah. You're like, why do we not listen? Why do we allow these younger ones who have this wrong think of this utopia that they think it is? I don't know where it's even coming from. Michael Moore. Okay. And so inside of that, and so that, so you look at it and you go, wait a minute, well, here's an idea. Right. Go talk to somebody who's been through. It's like right. they don't even want to. Yeah. Because how would you, there's no way you can listen to the stories of the people. Right. And they still think it's a good idea. My, uh, I got, I got a buddy of mine that I uh, worked at the fastener company with me, mm -hmm. and he's uh, Cubano, right? Can I say that? I yeah. think so. Hey, right? yeah, of course you can. You know, you're, you look like you could be one. You, you're in that I range could. that you could and fall to a lot. I talk Middle Eastern, and then they're like, mm -hmm. no, not so much. Yeah, because you remember, like, you talk about the Crips and stuff. Like, you're, also. Like, you're a bad hombre. Hey, hey, just don't call him a fink, obviously. <laughs> right, right. Don't call him. A <laughs> don't fink. call him a fink. All right. So, um, Do but the uh, total company. gringo, total gringo. Okay, and um, so he. His grandpa lived in Cuba. Okay. And was talking to his dad one day when his dad was about 15 or something okay. like that. And I guess his grandpa was shaving. And he was just kind of casually like, son, you want to go to America? Son was like, I'm 15. He's like, yeah, sure. That'd be great. And he's like, you leave tonight. Like, uh, like on that one, and they he, was, were and bolting. Then, and he had to sneak uh -huh. uh, out of the country yep. to come over here. And then, of course, my buddy is now, you know, obviously the grandson, but the son of... Let, let me... Let, let, you know what I feel <laughs> and, pretty and I think confident about? his grandpa stayed there. I, but I think... Oh, I, really? I think so, if like, I remember correctly. Let, here's what I want to tell you I feel pretty confident about. When he's doing this, he's already made those arrangements. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, he's already been through the process yep. of... Like, we have the luxury... Okay, I have a yeah. passport. Yeah. I can basically hop on a plane and say, hey, I'm... Guess what? Right. I live in London now. Yep. You know, within reason. Yeah. And, and they don't have that luxury. Right. It's okay. Well, all right, we're going. All right, let's I go. I mean, if I wanted... Like, there are so many... Like, from here, from the U.S., I could go to any number of countries and just... I could tell everybody. I could tell the whole world. I could get on social media right now and be like, guess what, guys? I don't like America. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to Germany. Mm -hmm. You know what? And you know what? I'll get some people poo poo at me and some people high five at me, and that's it. Do, do you? No government's gonna come after me. I'm not gonna be in trouble. If I decide to go over there for six months and I hate it and come back, my stuff's still gonna so be here. here. Like, do you, like, yeah, you know, they don't have that luxury. They I mean, leave it there. Provided it's my gone. taxes are paid, of course. Right, because you, know, you know they still take it. Right. But you know what's funny? It's like here, here's what I think that like I was thinking about this yesterday. They were talking about Elon Musk. He bought a bunch of Twitter. Yeah. And I look at it. Nine point two percent. He's the man around there. I know. Now. Like, think about that. Okay. So, but he, and you know what's funny? It was at three billion. I think he paid something like that. Like that. And yeah, you know he's like. You know, he did that basically for the fun of it. Can you imagine having three billion bucks and just for the fun of it? All right. So anyway, here's what people don't understand. People with that kind of wealth, they can just leave. Right. Like, okay, let's, if we're going to be honest, a lot of people inside the United States don't have the funds necessary to right. leave. Right. Okay. We want to dog out all of these guys making decisions who are actually offering jobs to people across the whole area. You know, they could, once again, like I said, they could shut down companies, they could be done. They they, they don't have to stay here. Right. They don't have to do, they, they could say, hey, listen, from now on, we're going to run Amazon out of China. Right. Like, you know, they have these freedoms. Then they go, hey, we're just going to do this from now on. Right. So we tend to kind of give them the wrong attitude sometimes. Right. Like, we get mad at why you have so much money. Well, you should be thankful right. that some people do because, um, all right, I'm going to give a little credit out to Sean Hannity. Okay. I, I know. But here's what he said. His... The, Stay with me for a second. I just got tagged as right wing. Is it right there. Oh, did you really? I just I literally it's tagged right now. Oh, right now. Got it. Oh, somebody just oh. tagged me. Somebody just so tagged me. So wait a minute. So right I say it and they tag you? I, I, well, oh, this I could guess. be pretty cool. I could have a lot of fun moving forward these last I, four weeks. I am now basically alt right, but okay. Yes. But here's what he said He makes it to the effect of, I've never gotten a job from a poor person. Right. That's not wrong. Right. People who are trying to borrow six bucks are not giving you a job. Right. That's not how that works. Right. So that there's a reality in the idea that why are we getting mad about these systems that we have? Right. Like why why do we want socialism when we see how right. it works? Whereas right here it shows, right. hey, you know what? Capitalism. Yeah. There's a good. there's a favorite quote of mine from Richard Epstein. I think he was a a lawyer and a, like a theorist or something like that. Okay. And he said, um, the study of human institutions is the search for the most uh, tolerable imperfection. Say it again. The the study of human institutions okay. is the search for the most tolerable imperfection. So since they're all going to be jacked up, all of them are imperfect. find the one you can We're deal with the best. You know, and and I think I, I, I know simple I am. Capitalism, in my opinion, 
has done way more to bring people out of poverty, whereas these other situations, these other systems mm -hmm. have done way more to put people into poverty. Part of the reason is because they were implemented at the government level. Yep. Uh, in fact, that might be the the reason. I was gonna say the because I think if you look at these private communities who chose right. to do it, they they're actually right. doing fine. The and, Amish is your example. They're the doing Amish, fine. The Amish they don't quite have a socialist society. No, and they don't but they quite have, have a they, capitalist. They have a level of aspects, right? and they have mm -hmm. limitations. Like you know, they pretend not to use electronics, but kind of do sort of. Yeah, they check you know? on their phone and they're right. sitting uh, at the shop and yeah. Anyway, yeah, and um, but uh, you know, so they're they're a lot limited in the infrastructure, you know, the social infrastructure than we are. Mm -hmm. And um, they're doing very, very well. Like, um, are there problems? Yes, of course there you know are problems. What's funny? Okay. There's always problems. All right, so group. take those situations where they seem to be doing their own thing, not really bothering anybody, and then government gets involved in those. Right. Waco? Right. What Ruby Ridge? Ruby Ridge? Right. These are perfect examples of these people are out here. We're, we're good. We're doing our right. own thing over here. We're not bothering anybody. Y'all best right. of luck to you. Government comes in yep. because they don't like the way it's being done. Right. And look and, what they do. And, it doesn't and, play out and, well. And we'll wrap it up by saying this. Oh. The, reason okay, that, wrap it up. the reason that government... Um, Paul, is this causes, like a closing wrap-up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So the reason that these, uh, these things get kind of jacked up like that uh, because of government is because of the imposition of force. Because ultimately, with labor unions and with socialism, the reason that I might support a society that implements them is only if that society is allowing everybody the free will, their, uh, their own agency to mm -hmm. decide, I want to be a part of this and I agree to whatever rules that we're all putting putting down. Okay. And so when you when you have this autonomy yep. that's on full uh that, that's fully uh permitted, you know, not obstructed, I wanna say fully permitted, but that is not Im impeded, impeded in any way, then you make a better society and you and, and people can flourish. But once you start imposing upon people, then it's 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 really um the reason that it doesn't flourish nearly as much. Is because you've got somebody that's busy trying to enforce the rules, right. mm -hmm. and they're not really equalizing people; they're just enforcing rules. And the way that you enforce rules is through that root word, force. Force, <laughs> and that's you know, force can go all the way up until lethal. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is why this is why socialist countries, this is why um, communist countries have so much killing. Oh, uh huh. Right, like by the government. I mean, yes, by the yep. the government does does this does the killing because they're like, hey, these people they're not cooperating like they're supposed to, right? And well, we we're gonna go fix that, and we can go into a long list hey, of hey. reasons why yeah, yeah, hey. the government, you know, uh, government messes things up. But ultimately, I think it boils down to the government messes things up because it doesn't allow people to operate on their own agency, their own autonomy. It doesn't allow me to say I will work with Tub. And we come to an agreement. And we do come to an agreement. We come to an agreement on this podcast. Mm -hmm. He's going to come over at a certain time. We sit down. We chit-chat for a while. We laugh. We kind of joke and poke at each other. And, and, you I know, have, no, we don't laugh. I find no humor. It's not pleasurable time. at all. It's not mm -hmm. pleasurable at all. Right. And then we sit down and we're like, all right, we're going to record. We agree upon a subject that we're going to talk about. We talk about it. We might deviate. But if we deviate, we deviate. Again, consenting. You know, mm -hmm. it's all yeah, right. consent is yep. all throughout our experience here. And that's why this podcast works, at least until you hear it. So you watch it and you like, go, dude, that doesn't Lord. work at all. Right <laughs> like, what are you, what are you, did they, I'm glad you put that at the end of it, because at right. the beginning, they go like, no, it doesn't. Right. Y'all don't work well at this at all. Right. So ultimately, we're only a fan of things where people have the right to say um, and agree and consent. And when you remove that, we're no longer for it. Um, also, I probably wouldn't join a socialist commune because I just don't think it would be for me. Fair enough. All right. Have a good one. Until next time.